Hello everyone and welcome to this section. In this section, we're going to cover um, the basics or fundamentals of computer vision, and we're going to understand how can we represent an image, how to obtain the features within the image, how to obtain, for example, the gradients of an image. It's very exciting, and I'm very excited to discuss all these like fascinating uh, topics with you. The first step is kind of an introduction, which is what is computer vision? The computer vision is kind of a science that's used to make computers understand what's happening within the image, okay? If there's, for example, objects within an image, in case of self-driving cars, if there is like a pedestrian that has been detec detected, if there is a specific lane that I need to be centered within, if there is a traffic sign, for example, that I would be able to see, and so on and so forth, okay? So again, computer vision is a science that allows computers to understand images and videos and determine what the computer sees or recognizes. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. All right. So let's take a look at what how humans actually use um, use you know like their eyes per se or you know the video stream that we acquire through through our eyes all the time, and we can see how can we imitate it in um, in a computer computerized fashion. All right. So that's how humans in general see. So let's assume that we have our, you know, kind of image like this of like a horses, for example, in a farm with like a bunch of mountains. The sensors that we use obviously is our eyes and then all the data can be sent to our interpreter or our like brain, okay, in our vortex. They can specify, okay, what can we actually see and classifies, for example, what we can see in the image and tell us, you know, it's guesses, okay. So, it, you know, it might guess, okay, we're seeing a horse or maybe horses, group of horses together, or maybe a mountain and maybe a farm, maybe all, the, all of them together, and so on, all right? And that's how humans in general uh, perceive or understand uh, or sees or recognizes objects within an image. How can we do that in computerized form? It's actually the same thing. So if we use the exact same image, we're gonna use a camera, okay? A camera to take just one standstill photo or kind of a video or a stream of, uh, of uh, photos. And within the computer, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna you know, kind of um, develop algorithms to tell us or classify you know, the images to again, horses, you know, mountains, farms, and so on and so forth, okay? That's pretty much what we're gonna do throughout the entire section, all right? So why is it important? Why computer vision is important? Actually, computer vision is applicable everywhere, not just in self-driving cars, but it's actually pretty much everywhere. So it can be used again for self-driving cars for pedestrians and car detection can be used for face recognition, you know, all the, you know, Facebook, for example, and Snapchat and all this stuff actually has to use kind of computer vision techniques. Um, object detection, obviously, which is kind of tied to our self-driving cars. We can be used for pedestrian, for example, detection. As you guys can see here, we can detect, okay, this is a pedestrian crossing this kind of a cyclist, you know, like crossing and so on. We can use it for handwriting recognition. We can use it for license plate number de detection. And it's actually one of the most famous, one of the very famous algorithms to just read, you know, whatever, take an image of a license plate and can read, you know, the numbers auto automatically. So it simply, you know, divides kind of, you know, the, uh, the plate of different numbers or different like characters and use a machine learning algorithm that can tell us, okay, this is a letter A, this is a letter N, this is R and so on. And obviously Snapchat filters. So again, computer vision is everywhere around us. All right. Next question, or the most important question is, why is it so challenging? All right, so I just went on Google and just write, okay, like, you know, cars. Let's take a look at cars. So as you guys can see, this is basically a bunch of cars. This is images of cars, okay? We as humans, we can easily classify, you know, like these images because we have an amazing, you know, outstanding generalization capability. We can just say, okay, even if we see a car from the behind, from behind, from front, with different colors, even if we look at, you know, at a cartoon, for example, or like, you know, like, even if it's very tiny or very small, I can just tell, you know, that it's a car, okay? However, it's actually a very complex um, uh, task to, you know, to train a computer to actually do it or train an algorithm to actually do it. Because we need, you know, if you're gonna specify, you know, based on colors, Actually, we have so many different colors. If we specify, for example, different lighting, here you might see a little bit darker image, for example. Or maybe this is like kind of a smaller image. There's different scales. You know, there's different orientation of the car. You know, there's car from the front, from behind, and so on. So that's why it's very difficult. It's actually a challenging task to train a computer in the same way that we actually do as humans, all right? I'm gonna go through all these challenges. I'm gonna show you how can we do all these, you know, image manipulations moving forward. All right? Okay, great. 
So let's take a look at a couple of the challenges, you know, and dig a little bit deeper. So the first step is viewpoints, all right? So let's, this is kind of an image of the CN Tower in, in Toronto, all right? And this kind of a view, you know, like from a kind of a far away, that's kind of a CN Tower, okay? We can recognize it easily. However, if viewpoint, if we, let's say, go underneath the CN Tower and look up, that's the image we're going to be getting. Or maybe if we get a little bit closer and get like, you know, kind of more, um, more uh, kind of angle, you get come up with like with this, right? However, these three elements are actually the same object. However, it's very difficult, you know, to take all these images and let, you know, a computer generalize, you know, and become way smart from different viewpoints can tell, okay, these are the CN towers, okay? We as humans, it's very easy for us to do. However, for computers, it's a little bit challenging. I'm gonna show you how, how these ch challenges as we move forward through the course. All right, that's the first step, which is viewpoint. The next step is what we call it camera limitations, all right? Obviously, so, you know, the better camera we get, you know, if we get, let's say, 1080, for example, uh, camera, pixel camera, we're going to be better than 240, for example. Here you will find that the image is a little bit blurred or a little bit not, not like, you know, like the resolution wasn't very uh, accurate or very, like, great. Here, as we increase the resolution that's better, we get more pixels. So we're going to show you how can we describe an actual pixel um, in a digital format. I'm sorry, an actual image in a digital format. And that's, you know, one of the challenges as well as our camera limitations, all right? The next limitation is obviously lighting, all right? Again, here we have our exact same object, which is, again, the CN Tower. Here, in the morning, in daylight, you know, maybe the machine learning algorithm or the, you know, computer, computer vision algorithm can tell us, okay, this is a CN Tower, easy. However, at night, you know, if it's a little bit dark, you know, the features for us are the same. However, it's a little bit difficult for the, for the algorithm to actually detect it because, you know, with different lighting conditions, for example, which is the same again for self-driving cars. We want our car to drive in the morning, at night, everywhere, in snow conditions, everywhere, and actually detect objects, objects and uh, pedestrians and so on. All right? Perfect. The next step is what we call it scaling. All right? So again, here is our object. If, what if we zoomed in, for example, to take, take an image like this, for instance, you know, like if we, what if we have, for example, classifying pedestrians, we might have a long, like a tall pedestrian, a short one, for example. How can a machine learning algorithm that can specify that, okay, all, the, all these are pedestrians, you know, all the cars, for example, a far car, a nearby car, how can we, how can we classify all that? That's, you know, the power of, um, of advanced kind of, you know, computer uh, vision algorithms, all right? And, up, and that's obviously one of the challenges that, you know, that are posed to them. The next step, or the last step, is what we call it object variation. Again, I went there, you know, I looked up, let's say, we're going to classify chairs, okay? That's, you know, the images of chairs. So all of them for us, you know, even if you show like to it or kind of a baby, he can easily, you know, classify, okay, these, all these are chairs, okay? Why? Again, because our brain can easily generalize, you know, it has seen, like, you know, like thousands and hundreds of thousands of images. However, to train this, you know, like to like a machine learning algorithm or like a computer vision, it's actually a challenging task. All right. So again, we, we, here we have different object variations. So like the actual chair, this chair, for example, looks completely different than this, looks completely different than this. There's different materials, different textures. And that's why it's very difficult to do uh, or very challenging to do computer vision in general um, uh, in a computerized fashion. All right, and that's pretty much all what I have for this section. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I can't wait to discuss uh, future sections with you. Thank you, and see you in the next one.